Welcome back, 164 scale diecast fans. Today we are looking at green light. I've got two complete sets, one of the Hobby Shop Series 13, the other of Vintage Ad Cars Series 7. Both of these are the newest series released at the time of filming, which is late September 2022. We've got new complete sets of both of those cars coming before Christmas for sure. So we've got to get this reviewed. All of these cars coming out for a loose full inspection and roll on the table here as well i have half the series from blue collar collection 10 so those are just my favorites out of that set there were some newer vehicles that i didn't feel i needed to add to my massive collection of green light so we're going to look at all of those as you can see i've got a few already opened up basically just to go in for a quick preview on what you're going to see today some of the highlights ones i couldn't live without a duplicate and that of course is one of these 72 cadillac coupe de ville with vintage gas pump those are really cool how they come with accessories in the hobby shop series a big fan of this series the only thing is i'm not a big fan of the red and white uh, awning that kind of shades out the die cast if you're a package collector makes it a little harder to see these vehicles uh, i get why they do it it's pretty cool but at the same time it's a bit of a bit of a problem uh the 89 ford taurus with sales associate in a suit well that's really cool I absolutely have gone nuts for this casting since they released it just a couple of months ago. The first release being the Robocop Ford Taurus from Hollywood Series 34. I have a package one there as well. We're just going to do a quick side by side. And then look at this one. The 76 Chevrolet Chevelle Laguna uh, with spare tires. Very snazzy paint job with that white interior and love getting spare wheels. There's another one of the same car, 73 version now, with the uh, Colonnade Hardtop Coupe, as it's called. That one being in the Vintage Ad Car series. So we've got both cars to look at. Uh, and looks like this one has a different front end to compare from 73 to 76 models. One of the best things about Greenlight is that they are so accurate with their reproduction models of the actual vehicles with year-to-year -year variations. Then, of course, the 72 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. Very cool. You may be able to tell I love my big 70s boat cars, as you may call them. Um, a whole bunch more cool cars in that set. And the artwork on vintage ad cars, very neat with those actual vintage ads depicting the vehicles in the package. And oftentimes with the same color combination as those in the adverts. So we've got a couple Ford F-150s to look at. Correction, an F-250 in the blue car color collection. Series 10, so all these again coming out of the packages for a side-by-side -side review with you guys. 78 GMC Caballero Laredo. That is a really cool casting. Apologies for tripping on the names of these cars. Um, and then we've got a couple big Dodge Rams coming out of the package. This one's outfitted with a snow blade. That's the Tradesman 2500. So without further ado, let's uh, get these vehicles cut out of the packaging we're going to take a quick look at those vintage ad car packages but really uh, all the rest of the packages are basically the exact same and there for your reference is the first release of the ford taurus uh, it was an 86 model so we're looking at 89 today from a hobby shop we'll do a side by side and of course many of these vehicles will end up in my scale junkyard diorama that's sam salvage yard ever filling up as usual I've got the tripod set up, so I'm going to start with vintage ad cars first. And for vehicles where there are two to look at from multiple series, I'll do the side-by-side -side at the end of the video, as I won't necessarily be opening up the same vehicle right after the uh, car that I'm showing you in this series. So we've got the 73 Chevrolet Chevelle Laguna, uh, and there is the advertisement for it. Advertisement? I don't know, everyone says it a little differently. But uh, you can pause on that and try to read it. It's pretty fine print if you like. I will offer that up for each of these in case you're not intending to buy it or don't see it in your local stores. All six in the collection. And, uh, well, it's the same advert on the back of the packaging as the front. So, really nice looking car. Great paint job. I really do like the Vintage Ad Cars series a lot because of just standard kind of realistic paint jobs you would have seen on these cars back in the day. And uh, so these ones are just, um, I didn't cut the packaging as I did have a duplicate. I'm going to save these. So we've got the 72 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. Uh, all the other ones in this set I'm opening up. So there's the advert. 
And let's go in for a closer look at that. Wow, that's really fine print. I don't know that we're going to be able to read that. Certainly I can't without getting my reading glasses. And that's just going to take too long. So we're going to look at the vehicles, not the packaging as much. And uh, I'm not sure if I held these up to the camera yet, but we're going to look at the uh, at the Chevelle again when we compare it with the Hobby Shop Chevelle. So I think we'll save that one for that activity. Uh, this car, I've got the four-door version in vintage ad cars and a two-door earlier model. No, sorry, same year. Coupe de Ville and a Sedan de Ville. So similar cars, but two-door and four-door, but really cool. Newer casting from Greenlight. Uh, does not have an opening hood, although I do believe this car does. I'm not 100% sure, actually. And uh, I don't think it does, actually. The green light is kind of moving away from opening parts on the cars, likely as a cost savings, uh, but also just to give them cleaner lines for the collector, since most people don't seem to open up their, their cars, I don't think. Uh, although they should, <laughs> in my opinion, to get the full enjoyment out of them. So there we have the... Jet Smooth 63 Chevrolet Impala Sport Coupe. Another very new casting. I believe it was just released this year. And uh, there's no smoother, more comfortable way to get there on the ground. Very cool adverts. So we'll get that one out of the package and take a look at it. Seeing I've only got one of these ones. Now this one I do believe does have an opening hood. And I've been quite surprised and impressed that the car's that Greenlight has released at least the latter half of 2022 do not come out of the package all greasy and and stuff so it seems like they've perfected a better way to keep the car shiny and preventing chafing in the packaging and yes we are still getting some opening parts on certain models which I think is absolutely fantastic especially with the level of detail that this Impala has we've got rad hose uh, air cleaner battery all the uh, all the things you'd expect to see under the hood, anyways, as far as I'm concerned. So quite happy with that, and just the extreme level of detail on these cars. Just going to step it in for a little bit of a zoom. So next out of the batch is the '64 Ford Thunderbird hardtop. I believe this one was first seen in the Thelma and Louise um, Hollywood set, which was released a couple of months ago. I'm not 100% certain on that, however. Uh, the 64 Ford Thunderbird, looking great. Has a plastic top, which is sometimes removed to make this car convertible. And uh, also features an opening hood. So I kind of should probably retract my statement about moving away from opening parts. They are still making castings with lots of opening parts. It's just the heavier castings, such as these big four-door cars. There's so much more die cast in them that, and you can feel the weight, that they're probably trying to equalize the cost of making the cars. Some get opening parts if they're smaller, which we're going to see right now on the 70 Datsun 510 with ski roof rack. So not only do you get accessories, but it also comes with a cool opening hood. So let's look at that one in just a moment. We're going to take a look at this advert. Black and white for that one. The Datsun 2. The Datsun Snow Job, it's called. Maybe you can pause on that one. 96 horsepower I'm seeing in there. Looks like I've decided to open up a second one of these. I'm not sure why I cut that one, but now we've got two. No problem. The more the merrier. So we can check out both. And uh, one with the hood closed and one with the hood open. Check out the detail on the skis even. The poles all painted up. Very cool little car. I like the white walls on it, but of course, if you don't, you can flip the tires around to have black wall out instead of white wall. So we've got two of those cuties. And finishing the series, we've got the 92 Ford F-150 Night Edition with this very cool advert. The night is young. Let's see that one a little closer up. Same truck. Hit the street tonight in the 92 Ford Knight pickup. I have not actually heard of this truck, but uh, there it is. So let's take a look at it. And from there, we can see the difference between the blue collar edition version F250, same year as this one. And as you can see, it comes out of the package pretty clean. It's got a few little fingerprints on it, but the microfiber reg will solve that problem. And we just need to catch the zoom again with a little background there. Having a little bit of a struggle here. 
being the night edition, it's hard to see. <laughs> but uh, black with blue faded stripes, so it's light blue, moves to a dark blue at the back with the word night embossed. Is that right? Yep. Very cool graphics, maybe not embossed, but you know what I mean. Uh, I think this one has an opening hood. No, it doesn't. Very cool. Love the wheels on it. All metal. So no opening parts, but uh, we're going to do some roll tests as we get into the video here. Definitely going to take a close look at these after I polish them all completely. That's that series. Um, before we move right on into Hobby Shop, let's take a look at Blue Collar. Just because I've only got three of this set. So we've got the jean pocket on the back of some denim. And uh, on the back, the hand with pencil, contractor, I guess. Missing the 69 Volkswagen double cab pickup, the 2019, no, 2021 Jeep Gladiator, and um, the 1954 Ford F100 are vehicles I chose not to buy, just for whatever reason. Can't have everything, although sometimes I think I try, but all the same. Love the paint job on this two-tone 92 truck. These trucks in real life are starting to go up in value, too. Um, got the double gas doors on it, I just noticed. It really doesn't like focusing on that all black pickup, but we could see the difference. Blacked out grille. Pretty much otherwise the same. I think they even have the same wheels, although the night version has the center caps painted red versus chrome on the 250. 250 comes with a hitch. And uh, Ford label on the tailgate is relocated, whereas Knight has it on an emblem to the far left. And the short, shorter box on the Knight, is that, am I just seeing things? Yeah, I'm seeing things. Box lengths are the same. So there's your side-by-side -side on those trucks. Again, uh, without me having to hold them in front of the camera, we'll probably get a clearer look at them as I pan across the collection towards the end of this video um, versus taking them out of the package here with you guys and doing it this way 78 gmc caballero laredo i love this casting from Greenlight as well as you can tell i love most castings from Greenlight. so held on with a little elastic we're losing focus every time i seem to do something that's because i'm looking at what i'm doing as well as looking at the camera so sometimes you know i I don't see both at the same time, but very cool casting. Metallic uh, copper, I guess, with that beige paint and the plastic top. Really cool. White wall tires. Actually, that's another thing I've noticed lately. I have not been complaining about misshapen white walls, and we looked at four already. Six, actually. So... Something has changed in green light quality control. They have got it nailed. Um, I would say, just taking a quick look at all these. I mean, the last few reviews I've done of all these cars are all solid rollers. So very, very light misshapen white walls, if any, which is to be expected. Like one, one in a few acceptable. This one has a black wall in the back. That's interesting. One of the tires got turned the wrong way. Actually, there's no white wall on it at all. So I guess uh, they got a flat somewhere along the way with the Ford Thunderbird. But yeah, really, really clean looking vehicles. Really enjoying how the uh, quality has been great. And I'm able to take these right out of the package with you guys without shining them up first. So if you're a package collector, know that your uh, vehicles inside are actually a lot cleaner than they were, say, a year ago. 2019 Ram 2500 Tradesman. And if you've been watching my review videos over the years, you probably, uh, you've probably noticed I've had a few gripes along the way. But I'm seriously impressed with Greenlight's quality control, the, especially these past uh, few months of 2022. And I'm sure that that is the trend they're going. They're, they are listening to the collectors. I wasn't alone in that. I could tell with uh, many of your guys' comments just how uh, disgruntled other collectors were as well with problems that we were seeing in the past that's a huge truck look at the size difference between these two castings that is incredible so again 
a huge variety of vehicles and being true 164 scale you know that's for me that is awesome it's pretty much a requirement for me now for collecting premium vehicles i'm not going to pay top dollar for anything unless it is true 164 scale and so with that we're going to move on to hobby shop let me just clear a little bit of rubble here first the first vehicle we are going to look at is the 2021 Ram 2500 Tradesman with garbage bin. Love the accessories, really do. And uh, so we're going to do a side-by-side -side with the 2022 Ram and Snowblade. So we've got more of a commercial front end on this truck. So there's the packaging in case you are unfamiliar with Hobby Shop. That's it. Got all six vehicles in the series, which of course you're going to see here today. So we don't need to linger there too long. Got this little tiny uh, trash can, doesn't want to focus for some reason. It's just so small, but very detailed. I, I'm going to start with the trash can, basically. And we're going to have to zoom right in. Trash only, check it out. Does that actually open up? It sure looks like it's going to. It does. Wow. I mean, that is just tiny as can be. Very cool wow the level of detail now it doesn't stand on its own but that's okay so there is the truck let's get out of the package and as you can see really nice big detailed mirrors on these vehicles running boards um, somewhat delicate they are made of plastic these bigger trucks usually do have a plastic base both of them do they both come with a hitch so they are hitch and tow compatible which is another very popular series by Greenlight. in case you're unfamiliar with that and uh really nice chrome wheels on it likely to see this truck in the dually driver series as well box is a little bit out of adjustment but that's a fairly easy fix sometimes you can pop it down just by pushing on it maybe not so this time all the same i'm quite impressed with the dodge pickup truck it's absolutely massive and dwarfs the other vehicles in the collection we'll do a side by side here of these two Heavy duty trucks. I'm just going to do a little zoom here. Try to get a little sharper focus for you guys. Very cool. I mean, check out the mirrors. They even have the signal lights in them, or at least indicated with a uh, line. Whoa, with a line on them. And uh, same wheel, different wheels. You got the more premium wheels on, I think, the bottom truck, but they both look good as far as I can tell. Definitely got the commercial black bumpers on the Tradesman. So there you got two different kind of um, optioned out Dodge Rams. With a tiny little dumpster. And from there, let's go on to my next probably favorite car in this bunch. It's a really close tie, but this is my favorite for right now just because it's so new. It's definitely going to be one of my favorites for a long time. That's the 89 Ford Taurus with sales associate in the suit. So I've already got one opened up, but there's another one just to show you how it comes. And this car, great that they've put mirrors right on it. And they're actually painted all the way around. So an iconic car of the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, really one of the first kind of jelly bean shaped vehicles to be produced and kind of indicate the uh, change that was coming for modernization of cars going forwards in that they would become rounded and not boxy as many cars of the 80s were boxy and square the Taurus was extremely aerodynamic and was a top seller also front wheel drive which was kind of new for the time most cars were rear rear wheel drive um, especially in the midsize and larger so this would be a midsize car I would suppose not not a full-size car but still quite a comfortable vehicle and uh, with the SHO packaging, you could get this as a high-performance car as well. It's to this day, a very collectible vehicle. Not many of these on the road in this trim level, though, I have to say. And well, we were going to do a side-by-side -side with Robocop's car. So far, Greenlight has released three of these vehicles. Uh, the one I'm missing, well, it's in transit to me right now in the mail, is a Hot Pursuit Series 41. It's a white Ford Taurus. But we've got the first release Robocop with push bar, light bar, whaler on the roof, Robocop's car. Very cool. Um, more of these being released soon. 
in different colors as Greenlight often does with new releases. They really hit while the uh, iron is hot, uh, so to speak, and get the collectors wanting to at least get several color variations right off the bat and make the casting mold worthwhile. I think that one's gonna be worthwhile for a long time as many of the castings have been for Greenlight. Uh, so here we have the Chevelle Laguna S3 with spare tires. I have one of these opened up already. I think I'll just save you the pain of watching everything drop out there and we'll go straight to that one. Uh, it came out of the package nice and shiny. Got a really nice stance to it. I mean, maybe the axles are a little bit too wide, but I think they're pretty, pretty good, actually. You could certainly short them up if you want a little bit pretty easily. I mean, as you can see by the packaging, these are intended to be customizable. Um, got two spare axles, which are normally taped there. I took the tape off. And then four spare wheels with hubcaps instead of the rims on it. Slotted rims, I guess. Oh, well, I guess we'll open it up. So interestingly, interestingly, the spare tires that I got with this first vehicle were three hubcaps and one more of the uh, chrome slotted rim. Where are we going to get a focus? There it is. I always forget which side the camera lens is on. I'm not looking at the front of it, so... I have five of the same wheels and three of the other. I don't really care. They make great little uh, parts for my junkyard, and I'm not going to go to the trouble of changing them all out. And I was incorrect about this car. It does have an opening hood. It actually opens really nice, so I apologize for saying that Greenlight uh, was not making as many opening hoods. It seems, if any like anything, they're making more this year than they have uh, since they first started making cars, which was like pretty much a standard feature back uh, when Greenlight first started making cars in the inaugural years of green light but as you can see completely different uh tail lights where is the focus here there we go yeah very good tail light change bumper change trunk lids changed quite a few model year changes for this car and they got the part vinyl roof on the newer model here the black one completely different front end i suspect the hood opens on this one Will I be able to get it open on camera? That's another story. Yeah, I can tell it wants to open. Anyways, uh, the, the model, the casting is basically the same other than those front and rear differences. So I can't see. Actually, look at the differences right there. I've got no window. Hmm, very different cars uh, from 73 to 76. Quite impressive. So we'll keep moving along there as I've put a million fingerprints on that model. I'm going to have to go back and shine everything up with my microfiber here. A lot of cars being reviewed today, as you can see, all at once. Reason being, I have so much to review with you guys. I've not kept up with the sheer quantity of awesome die casts that came out this summer. And that's from Hot Wheels, Greenlight, Matchbox, Auto World, M2, Johnny Lightning. Uh, but we're focusing on Greenlight today, the 72 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. And like I said, I already have one of these open up as well. Do I? Yes, I do. Um, opening hood? I don't think so. It looks like it's a separate cast piece for sure. So customizers could do that. Again, really nice white wall tires on these cars. Nice chrome parts. Another thing, I've not seen any glue spots or fingerprints on the windows. Something has definitely changed with Greenlight. And it is very welcome, extremely impressive, and uh, I have to give them a huge kudos to listening to their audience and fans and uh, people that are purchasing their products. These cars have all been coming out problem-free, I would say. And rollers, too, like really nice rolling cars. I'm not going to roll all of them at once. There's just too many on the table right now. Uh, let's not forget about the vintage gas pump comes with this car so let's go in for a quick look at that thing i mean check out the details on this thing premium gas the hose on each side wow impressive and uh it's nice to have two of these because i bought two of the car so we could set up a little diorama gas pump station maybe in the diorama somewhere we've got uh one more car to look at in the vintage ad car series or sorry hobby shop series still zoomed all the way in here the 82 checker marathon a12e i think with driver in suit very cool um not too often you get this car not in a police or taxi livery 
So another reason why I love Hobby Shop, much the same as the vintage ad cars, is the cars generally have just very subdued, stock, normal paint jobs that you would see on cars of the year. Which, for me, that's great. If I wanted uh, flashy, overprinted cars, well, I'd buy a Hot Wheel. Or, you know, just flashy cars in general. There's lots of other series released by Greenlight that do have cars that are very uh, decorated. Racing, the Rally series, um, Hot Pursuit, the um, Fire Series cars. So this one's got a bit of a scuff on the hood, but you know what? It's a, it's a taxi. It's not a big deal. I'm sure I could shine up with a little bit of automotive polish. And uh, again, the white walls are really good. Straight wheels, rollers all the way through. This one has a nice opening hood too. I love this casting. It's released a few years ago now by Greenlight, but I raved about it when it first came out. Extremely detailed engine bay. And definitely biting my tongue to say that these cars didn't have many opening hoods these days. Look at all the opening hoods. They're absolutely everywhere. And at least, you know, at least half the cars, I would say. Really cool. So I'm going to straighten all this out. We're going to go in for a final overview of these cars so you can see them all lined up. And to finish off the video, all of the cars parked nicely side by side. We're going to go in for a close look at them all. And they're all shined up. I tested all of these vehicles here with a roll test. And every single vehicle rolls perfectly straight and true. No bound up wheels, no overly misshapen white wall tires, no glue or fingerprints on any of the windows, no defects in any of the paint jobs. The only thing I found kind of a little bit strange was how the tampo was presented on the Coupe de Ville. It doesn't quite reach the outer portion of the roof line, so I'm not really sure why that happened because on the Sedan de Ville, they got it just perfect, but for some reason it looks quite strange that it's maybe too far back on the casting. I'm not sure what happened with the print. It's just too small, too narrow, and that should have gone right to the uh, window trim sill. Uh, so that's a minor sort of discrepancy that I noted, and uh, other than that, the one tire that didn't have a white wall on it for the Ford Thunderbird that was the only other small discrepancy and very easy to fix that with uh, the amount of spare green light white wall tires I have as I do often switch them around to black wall just as a personal preference. Such a cool collection though. Um, I paired all of these cars together not only because I have a lot of things to review with you guys but because they all have that nice stock paint job to them. And uh, they look really good together, that being the Hobby Shop and the Vintage Ad Car Series, as well as Blue Collar. Uh, typically all have very normal paint jobs, and it just looks great in a diorama, in the collection display walls, just anywhere. Really cool. I mean, in general, green light vehicles do all have terrific uh, paint jobs and livery on them. I just really like stock looking vehicles. So a nice shiny bunch of cars. Going to try and figure out which ones are going into the diorama junkyard. Certainly several will. As you can see, many green lights do get here. And that is why I bought some duplicates. I'm going to put uh, definitely the duplicated purchases into the junkyard. And then the remainder is going to go on the display walls, which are in the remainder of the museum. This, of course, is the Hot Wheels room. So those are all Hot Wheels. But it's the same idea where the green lights go. Anyways, if you're after any of these awesome models, uh, happy hunting. I hope you can find them in the wild. And uh, thank you, Greenlight, for listening to your fans and building terrific models with great quality. I'm looking forward to buying many more. We'll see you guys soon.